Among all the stars in the sky, the Sun is the closest to Earth. The nearest star other than the Sun is about four light years away, but light takes only about eight minutes to reach the Sun. Despite being so close, the Sun still holds many unsolved mysteries. So, what mysteries of the Sun did the probe that plunged into it uncover? The first mystery of the Sun is the solar corona heating problem. The surface temperature of the Sun is about 10,800 degrees Fahrenheit. On the other hand, the area above the surface, called the corona, is about 1.8 million degrees Fahrenheit. To understand how strange this is, it is like the air outside a heated incandescent light bulb being much hotter than the glass itself. Some media report that the solar corona problem has been solved, but all of these are just theories and hypotheses. The principle of heating the solar corona remains unknown. The second mystery is the generation and acceleration of the solar wind. Solar wind consists of charged particles emitted from the sun. Charged particles are particles with electric charge, such as protons and electrons. For example, when liquid hydrogen is heated, it becomes gas. If the gas is heated further, electrons separate from protons and move freely. This state is called plasma. Because the sun's temperature is extremely high, most of its components are in the plasma state. The sun is mainly made of hydrogen and helium, so the solar wind consists of hydrogen ions, helium ions, and electrons. These charged particles peel off from the sun's surface and fly out into space. By the way, one component of the solar wind is helium-3. Helium-3 is one of the best fuels for commercial nuclear fusion power. Helium-3 from the solar wind reaches Earth, but is mostly blocked by Earth's magnetic barrier and hardly reaches the surface. On the other hand, the Moon, which has no atmosphere, receives a large amount of helium-3, which accumulates in the lunar soil. For this reason, the Moon is gaining attention as a potential source of helium-3. The solar wind is released from the Sun at about 37,000 miles per hour. When it reaches Earth, its speed is about 1.3 million miles per hour, accelerating more than 10 times. Why the solar wind accelerates so rapidly is still unknown. On August 12, 2018, NASA launched a spacecraft called the Parker Solar Probe. It directly observes the heating of the solar corona and the acceleration of the solar wind. Exploring the Sun might seem easy because of its strong gravity. It might seem like all you need to do is fall toward the Sun. But in reality, going to the Sun is very difficult. This is the Solar System. The Earth orbits the Sun at about 67,000 miles per hour. When a rocket launches from Earth, it also moves around the Sun at about 67,000 miles per hour. If the rocket heads straight toward the Sun, it will accelerate due to gravity and fly past the Sun. Therefore, slowing down is necessary to reach the Sun. How much slowing down is needed? It is 55 times the energy required to go to Mars. Because it is difficult to slow down so much using rocket boosters, spacecraft use a gravity assist. A gravity assist is a navigation method that uses the gravity and orbital energy of celestial bodies. It allows spacecraft to accelerate or decelerate without using fuel. For example, the Cassini spacecraft, after leaving Earth, was pulled by Venus to accelerate. Then it was pulled by Earth to accelerate again. It was pulled once more by Venus before heading to Saturn. 
The celestial bodies that accelerate spacecraft slow down their orbital speed, transferring that energy to the spacecraft. Going to the Sun is the exact opposite. Gravity assist is used to slow down the spacecraft. The spacecraft transfers energy to celestial bodies, which speed up their orbit while the spacecraft slows down. The yellow line shows the Parker Solar Probe's orbit. After leaving Earth, it slowed down by using gravity assists from Venus several times, adjusting its orbit. Now, what is the structure of the Sun? As you know, the main component of the Sun is hydrogen. Since hydrogen is a gas or plasma, its density decreases the farther it is from the center, but there is no clear surface. Because having no surface is inconvenient, the Sun's surface is defined as the layer where electromagnetic waves cannot pass through and it becomes opaque. This layer is called the photosphere. The photosphere is about 310 miles thick, and its temperature is about 10,800 degrees Fahrenheit. Outside the photosphere is the chromosphere. It is about 620 miles thick, and its temperature is about 18,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Outside the chromosphere is the corona. Because the chromosphere and corona are dense with solar material, they are called the Sun's atmosphere. If the Sun has an atmosphere, where is the boundary between the Sun and outer space? Here is the Sun's surface. Material is emitted from the surface. Some of the material is pulled back by the Sun's gravity and magnetic field. Other parts escape the Sun's gravity and magnetic field and flow into space. The boundary between the area where the Sun can hold its material and where it cannot is called the Alfven surface. This surface is the boundary between the Sun and outer space. The Parker Solar Probe, which approached the Sun, reached speeds of up to about 450,000 miles per hour at its closest approach. This is the fastest human-made object in history. By comparison, the Sun's escape velocity at the surface is about 1.3 million miles per hour. So, at 450,000 miles per hour, the probe cannot escape the Sun's gravity, but orbits while gradually approaching it. In April 2021, the probe entered the solar corona for the first time in history. How do we know it entered? By the flow of charged particles. Normally, solar wind flows away from the Sun. But beyond the Alfven surface, some particles flow back toward the Sun. By observing this particle flow, scientists confirmed the probe's entry into the corona. The probe sent photos of the particle flow. This image shows structures called streamers flowing from left to right. The probe repeatedly entered and exited the corona, observing the structure of the Alfven surface. The result showed the boundary between the Sun and space is not a perfect sphere, but uneven. The discovery of switchbacks. The Parker Solar Probe observed short periods, from a few seconds to minutes, where the magnetic field suddenly reversed direction. This phenomenon is called a switchback. It is believed to be caused by turbulence due to gaps on the Sun's surface, created by convection. Observations continue, and the cause of switchbacks may soon be understood. Dust and dust holes around the Sun. There are many small dust particles around the Sun. They are remnants of material that did not become planets or celestial bodies. Theoretical calculations show dust cannot exist close to the Sun. However, this was never observed until the Parker Solar Probe's time series observations of dust around the Sun 
they found dust density starts decreasing from about 6.2 million miles from the Sun and reaches the detection limit at about 4 million miles. This confirms the presence of a dust-free zone around the Sun, as predicted by theory. The Parker Solar Probe has entered the Sun's corona and continues its observations. But why doesn't it burn up or melt as it gets so close to the Sun? The reason is strict heat protection. First, it has a heat shield. The shield is installed on one side of the spacecraft. Its size is 7.9 feet wide and 4.3 inches thick. The shield is made of carbon foam and coated with white ceramic to reflect the sun's intense electromagnetic radiation. It is 95% hollow inside, making it light and strong. The hollow structure also reduces heat transfer, so even if exposed to extremely hot flames, little heat reaches the other side. In fact, the shield's surface heats to over 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, but the opposite side remains around 570 degrees Fahrenheit. Second, the cooling system. The spacecraft equipment is cooled with water. Heated water is cooled by radiators. Circulating water prevents equipment from overheating. Third, an autonomous flight system. Because the spacecraft is far from Earth and there is communication delay, manual operation is impossible. Therefore, its attitude is controlled automatically by a program. The spacecraft has solar limb sensors on its edges. When the attitude is correct, sensors are shaded by the shield. If the attitude shifts, sunlight hits the sensors and the spacecraft automatically adjusts to keep sensors in the shade. Fourth, special materials. Some equipment cannot be cooled directly, so materials resistant to heat are used. These include titanium zirconium molybdenum alloys that can withstand up to about 4,260 degrees Fahrenheit and tungsten, which can withstand about 6,200 degrees Fahrenheit. Wiring uses sapphire crystal tubes instead of ordinary wires. The heat protection system is strong, but a new question arises. The solar corona temperature is about 1.8 million degrees Fahrenheit. Why does the probe not melt when entering the corona? The answer is the low density of the sun's atmosphere. Temperature is an average of kinetic energy, and the transfer of this energy depends on particle density. For example, if you put your hand in 212 degree Fahrenheit hot water, you will burn immediately because many water molecules hit your skin. But if you put your hand in a 392 degree Fahrenheit oven, it doesn't feel as hot because air molecules are much less dense. The solar corona has a much lower density than Earth's atmosphere, so the probe is not heated as much when entering. The probe's shield blocks electromagnetic radiation directly from the sun, and the cooling system handles the heat from the million-degree corona. The sun is the closest star to us. It is very familiar, but its intense energy blocks observation, and its strong gravity makes it difficult for spacecraft to approach. Currently, solar activity is stable, but sometimes the sun produces intense solar wind or decreases output, greatly affecting our lives. Studying the sun helps protect satellites and life on Earth. The sun is the source of all energy on Earth, Ongoing observations will continue to reveal more about the sun.